Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, April 11th of 2019. It's uh, about 10.30 a.m. in the morning. And the big news is that Assange has been arrested, taken out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London and... Um, the other big news is, and I don't see it here, here it is, Amazon reportedly employs thousands of employee, thousands of people to listen to your, I can't say the word, I'll say, well I can say echo, to listen to your echo conversations, I can't see, can't say that word because I have a, in the other room we have the echo device and then we have another echo device in here but I use the A word for it. Uh, but the story says <clears throat> the story says that uh, there is a setting. I don't have my cell phone right now. My son's using it because my ex-wife and son uh, have gone to Walmart to get food. So I don't have my cell phone with the app, but it says that uh, in the settings for, well, I do have my, which I never use, which is, my, I have the Fire tablet that has the app on it, but it's not even charged up and I don't even know where it is. I never use it. Um, but it says there's a setting that you can go in to turn it off so nobody is, you know, listening. Uh, my ex-wife I you know gave her one of the echo devices my ex-wife and my grown son all three of us share this apartment because we were living but first when I she was living here and then my son and I moved to Fort Worth and we were living upstairs in an apartment and it was a uh, one bedroom one bathroom apartment and then we moved a few years ago to, uh, well, Russ and I, was Russ and I, my grandson. We moved to this apartment here on the end, which is two bedroom, two bathroom. Then eventually my uh, grandson moved in with his mom and uh, Darlene and James moved in here in order to, so we weren't paying double everything and uh, so I got her eventually I just gave when echo came out I got I got one for my so I gave her I got one for me which I very rarely use and then I gave it to her and I bought the next you know version two and I wasn't sure she would use it oh my god she uses it all the time drives me crazy using it. She uses it constantly. So I uh, better make sure that uh, she, use it. she uses it to ask, you know, she'll be watching, she watches television. She's handicapped. She's in a wheelchair. And uh, she has television on all the time. And when she, you know, when she's in bed, she has the remote and she'll fall asleep with the remote. Uh, some of the programs get really loud, you know, she'll be watching something that's at regular volume and she falls asleep and then it kicks in when they switch or whatever and the volume is really loud. I've got, she has a, re, a big remote, a Roku TV, I have a small one. So I'll take my road in, remote in there and turn the volume down, but then it'll kick back up. But she watches She'll be watching movies and she'll ask uh, uh, how much is the net worth of so-and-so, uh, who was in such and such a movie, and on and on. Um, so I was mistaken. I, I was afraid that she wouldn't, you know, that, that she wouldn't use it. And she uses it all the time. Uh, the other day she said that uh, 
Walmart was worth more than Amazon? And I said, I don't think so. She said, yeah, I asked, you know, asked that question. I said, I, it just doesn't sound right. And then today before she was, she was, Hillary came over and she was telling Hillary, you know, that uh, Walmart is worth more than Amazon. And uh, she said, you know, and so she asked Echo, well, then it came back. <laughs> Amazon is where I forget $900 billion or something. I forget what she, what the numbers were and, and uh, what she had done is she'd ask how much uh, Jeff, what's his name, they, how much he was worth. So he's worth, I forget, $300 billion or something and Amazon or uh, Walmart is worth 600 billion or something. She hadn't asked, you know, so then this time she asked for, and it came back. So she uses it all the time and it sort of drives me crazy. Now, it's kind of funny. I was afraid she wouldn't be using it and it'd be wasted. I, I hate to have wasted high tech stuff. You know, I want to use everything. So it's getting used. But when they get back from the store, I'll make sure the settings are in there set to not use, not to use, have somebody able to listen and then enter that in the computer for, uh, you know, uh, making the computer understand better the stuff that it's hearing. Under pressure, Amazon plans to accept cash at cashier-less go stores. Uh, so, I'm using Manicam to record this. I switched, uh, what was I using before? The last few videos I have used is, uh, Movidia Video Suite 18 using the Record Desktop. Um, Oh, anyway, Assange has been arrested. If you have a follower, you'll know I'm very liberal and uh, in politics. But when uh, Assange started, when he was when he was free and when he was releasing data and information or whatever, a lot, maybe all of my liberal friends were thought he was a hero and God bless him uh, and I did not you know I did not uh, agree I and I so I'm glad that he's been arrested now and I hope they throw hope they throw the book at him hope they charge him with everything they can charge him with what upset me and and didn't upset you know a lot of liberals back then what well he released a whole ton, uh, lots of information you know some of it was military showing uh, drone strikes and information like that that the military did not want released then he released other you know other information but well my complaint well I had a bunch of complaints about that but you know, the, remember the New York Times, the Washington Post, and some other major news organization, you know, released the information. And they released, you know, tons of information, all kinds of information. And they said, well, our editorial staff has gone over the material and made sure that there's nothing that's released that would be hurt our national security or would endanger any person or whatever. And I was, I, in fact, I made, you know, someplace on here, you probably can't find it, but I made, you know, YouTube videos about that saying they're not qualified to make those kind of decisions. And, and you don't know one little piece of information that is totally insignificant or appears to be totally insignificant insignificant could be of major major importance and it could be uh, 
something that could result in, you know, catastrophic. It could, it could result in nuclear annihilation. We don't, you just don't know the New York Times people are not qualified. And I think I mentioned the fact that the, the way that we got um, bin Laden was we had a little piece of information, you know, when we were going through all this, we, there was a little piece of information about, I forget the exact details, but whether the person was, had been used in the past, just one name that somehow we got in information coming in along with tons and tons of other information coming in. One little name that that he was either the driver or he was a courier, had been a courier, courier for Bin Laden. And that was, you know, CIA specialist and that type of stuff or uh, people, experts in the government zeroed in on, well, they were, didn't zero in just on that, but they zeroed in a lot and that was, but that name, okay, then that, that's what led us to, you know, getting bin Laden. Uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis and after the Cuban Missile Crisis, just, you know, fairly recently, in the last few years, you know, we found out, well, after the Soviet Union, uh, stopped being the USSR and uh, did away with communism, uh, information came out and something we found out that we did not know was that the ground forces, a, a Russian general, had a nuclear or a couple nuclear weapons and uh, he had the authority to launch them. And if we had, they interviewed him after the fall of Russia or whatever, uh, that if we had of uh, launched an invasion of Cuba, that he would have used a nuclear weapon. And that nuclear weapon would have taken out all of the troops that were landing, all of the ships. And I mean, it would have been, we would have then, we would have retaliated you know, with nuclear weapons against the USS, it would have been, you know, the end of the world. Uh, what we also then found out later on was that there were three Russian submarines in that area of uh, Cuba. We put a blockade around Cuba. There were three Russian submarines and each Russian submarine had one nuclear torpedo. Now they couldn't have launched it, you know, and hit Miami or the United States. That was a torpedo. But there again, if we were having a invasion, you know, and there were John F. Kennedy was president, there were people who were, look, well, General Curtis LeMay. I'm not sure if he was then head of the SAC, Strategic Air Command, our nuclear arm or if at that, because he held three, you know, different posts at different, or if he was secretary of the uh, Air Force, and then he had, a, there was, I'm not sure exactly, but he was, you know, in the office, along with two or three, with other people, and his advice to, which always was his advice, apparently, he wanted to use it against China, you know, when, uh, when North Korea invaded South Korea, and then when the Chinese came in, he wanted to use, he was advising the president who would have been uh, Truman, I believe. Yeah, Truman. Uh, he always would, let's, you know, let my boys go, you know, let's use this nuclear. He wanted to, and, and the same thing with, uh, you know, some people were calling, telling President Kennedy, we need to, you know, invade Cuba with, you know, land forces. And General Curtis LeMay was saying, let's use a nuke on them. So it was extremely, extremely, and you just don't know when information is classified. Yes, does the government classify too much information? Definitely. Should that be stopped? 
should there maybe even be penalties for classifying something to keep just to keep it hidden because there's some kind of a mistake or or whatever but uh, so so I hope that uh, I'm glad that Assange is <laughs> I apparently uh, Ecuador says that Assange put feces on the embassy walls and apparently to reading between the and I think they've sort of say it they're saying that he was doing illegal you know he was granted asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in London you know provided that he didn't do anything illegal and that he didn't and apparently he was in in there doing things that were you know illegally doing things illegal and you know the guy just and there's a picture of him which makes me now I know that's not right to look to look at somebody's picture okay we're updating the screen but I didn't do to upgrade you know okay by the way I'm using the new okay come on why are we okay here we are um I think if I click on here, it'll show it. There's a picture. You know, they had to drag him kicking and screaming out of the embassy. And, uh, but there's a picture down here someplace of him. Okay, that's not it. But in the back of the police van or whatever, and he's got this look on his, and he's giving a thumbs up or whatever. Um, and I hope that they, uh, I hope they can lock him up uh, for a long time. Come on, I know I saw it. Maybe if I go to, maybe if I go to politics, no, go to US, see what pops up here. Apparently, you know, there was two people missing uh, in the Dominican Republic, uh, two tourists. So you kind of wonder if were they kidnapped or whatever. And apparently now uh, it looks like that uh, their car went into the ocean or whatever. And because the Dominican Republic at some point pulled a woman. Well, I think she was off, off out of the water, but she died in the ICU after eight days and then apparently the man's body was found you know in the water the, they haven't been able to get to the car yet because of uh, but this is like eight days ago so people have been wondering family up and everybody I guess been wondering uh, where the couple was so I was uh, concerned maybe because I don't know about Dominican Republic but like Costa Rica is supposed to be really nice I know they're not the same. I'm not like Trump that, uh, or the white, was it Trump's White House that, no, it was Fox News that, instead of saying, you know, people were coming to the United States from Honduras or, uh, they were, you know, Honduras and Costa Rica and South and uh, whatever, they had like Mexico, 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 they, you know, they didn't know the difference between, you know, I'll tell you. It's amazing sometimes when you uh, look at, C just it's like CNN site, when you see something that's very poor grammar or, or, or misspelled or whatever. I know they're in a, all these Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and all these, they're in a big hurry. But you'd think there would be more than one, you know, more than just one editor, you think there'd be several people who would be looking at something and catch, although I can understand, but of course I was just one person with my blog. There's times I, uh, I would, uh, there'd be something misspelled that would be there maybe in a menu item or the heading or maybe, maybe even a title to something 
would be misspelled. And I wouldn't, you know, I just wouldn't see it because I just looked at it and my brain, you know, would go that that's such and such a word because that's what I intended the word, you know, to be. And so I can understand it, but still it seems like, my God, CNN should catch, because I see them just about every day, something that's worded incorrectly. Dow's down 57 points. Um, don't know if you can hear the sirens or not. We're right next, to, well, of course it's not close, but we're right next to a fire station. If you've seen my outside videos, you've probably seen some videos of me taking around that fire station. It seems like it's been really noisy here today. In fact, I just about the time it stopped, just about the time I started this, uh, they were cutting the grass and using blowers uh, for the leaf blowers and that type of stuff outside. And then last week, three, four days or more, and it seemed extra amount. Uh, we're real close to a air base. It's a re reserve air base now. And uh, so the Marine Corps, the Navy, and the Air Force, the reserve people fly out of there. And for the last few days, man, they've been, they've been doing a lot of flying and they've been doing really lower, you know, it's been really loud. Um, so anyway, I'm using the new Edge. Let's take a look at help and feedback and go over to about Microsoft Edge. Well, this is Microsoft Edge development. And I don't know, we're up to version 74.1.96.24. I don't know if they're updating it daily or weekly or whatever because it's not going through the regular, you know, it's just apparently it just happens. Uh, I'm able to, use, you know, before I couldn't use uh, Edge because it, a long, well, a while back, I couldn't use it because it didn't have LastPass and it didn't have uh, something else. But now with, uh, well now I am, I've been, I have been able to use it. Here it is. You know, I don't think you're gonna see any, uh, this is the regular edge. Um, but I've been able to use it because I have all the uh, things that I, you know, the extensions and things that I need. Yeah, the, the things that I need are LastPass Password Manager and Grammarly. I use that. I I did pay for the uh, more expensive. Things are loading slow. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Things loading slow because I'm, you know, recording the uh, desktop with Manicam, but um, so I'm very happy right now with the uh, edge development and of course they're just working on it and they're going to uh, be working on it. I see up here they're having the Senate hearings on the Trump's U.S. Space Force. Oh my God, my God, my God. Uh, By the way, um, I've had, see where do I want to go? YouTube, okay. Made a video the other day, uh, two hours long, YouTube video, two hours long and uploaded it and Looks like Manicam is using, because when I use the other, there's not just much a delay, so. But anyway, uh, made a two hour video the other day, uploaded it, 
and there was nothing in it that would would be inappropriate and then she think a kid not going to the cafeteria school grade school cafeteria and instead going to um, huh I think they I think they corrected it. They turned off the Now I can't find it. Oh. Did I delete it by mistake? Oh man talking about the early days of the let's see that was an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, I think they corrected it. Okay, that was one. Yeah, I, so they did. I I clicked on the thing to uh, review it and it said it would be reviewed in like up to two weeks or whatever and they've, they corrected it. So that's okay. Um, Now this one here, uh, that was it's marked, but I didn't click click for them to review it because I don't know what I said. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, th okay, this is the one, but I didn't cl click on it because uh, I mean I didn't. They turned off the ability to monetize it saying that it might not be appropriate for some advertisers. I don't think I said anything during it that would be inappropriate, but I'm not sure. And I, let's see, it's 34 minutes, but I don't want to listen to myself for 34 minutes to go through the thing. So I'm just leaving it, you know, leaving it alone. Um, Somebody asked me a question, that's a comment, asking a question, but it was on a video from a few years ago, but it was about the church that you see up here in this video, St. Vincent's Church. What was the question? Oh, there again, I don't want to listen to the video again, but it was asked why I stopped going to the, to that church. Um, I didn't mention that in the uh, in the video. Well, I mean, I was an altar boy when I was in grade school. I went well. I went to Catholic grade schools. I went to Catholic high school, taught by the Christian brothers. Um, and I really didn't go to church after you know, you know, after that. So it's not like I left. The reason specifically that I, I'm not sure what I mentioned in the video, uh, that I stopped going to that church was, you know, uh, I was out of the parish. That was in downtown Kansas City. And I was out of the parish, but I didn't go to the Catholic church in the parish that I was in. And also this would not have stopped me, but the French cardinal who has passed away now who broke with the pope and was i think excommunicated uh they set up underneath him they set up underneath him his followers uh and more he objected and a lot of catholics objected to and i really did not care for it either. That was what, of course, that was an excuse I used to, um, not going to church because now they were, it was in English and now they were playing, using guitars and doing all this kind of stuff. That was kind of an excuse on my part. But a lot of Catholics uh, didn't like the changes that were made by the, 
whatever council it was that met and decided to make some changes to uh, the way things were done. Nothing major. Well, I don't know, doing away with, you know, letting everybody let masses be in the local language. Uh, stuff like that. That's kind of a mate, but um, anyway, the French cardinal people they set up a a more well, like it was like the you know they did masses in Latin, and they didn't adopt and use a whole bunch of the new changes, so it was like the old time Catholic Church, um, but. That group uh, purchased this Catholic church and school and and whatever, and uh, so I did go to there a, a couple times uh, for some reason, and it was like the old, you know, like the old days. Uh, kind of foolish. I always, when, like when I was at, when I did go to Mass, I just, re, you know, I realized when I was a kid and, you know, that, hey, you know, I'm in this church here and we're saying the Mass in Latin. Of course, we had our, you know, Bible guy that, or the missile, Catholic missile that happens in the, you could Latin here and the rest is in English so you know what, you know. But I, I always thought it was nice to know, hey, all around the world, 24 hours a day, masses are being said and they're all being said this way. Those people's missile, if they're in Vietnam, you know, half is in Latin and the other half is in Vietnamese. And, I, and then I always thought if I ever, heck, if I was in Moscow or Peking or whatever and went to a Catholic church, I could go in, I'd be, you know, right at home. And it was just kind of a, something I liked, an idea. But then, man, after I didn't go to church, stopped going to church, really. And then when I finally did go to church for some reason, because I had some friends, even though I didn't go to church, I had uh, two identical twins. Larry and Jerry Winship, who went to high school with me, and they asked me to be their godfather, so I was a, the godfather for them. My when I got married, my years later, I forget exactly how far. My mother-in-law, who acted like you know, like she liked me, but I don't. She didn't really like me. I don't think. Uh, she asked me to be her uh, godfather and also, of course, at the same time. So I was her godfather. And also then she they did the confirmation at the same time. So I went to church a few times. But when I went into, you know, the churches, it's just really for an old person. Now it doesn't matter, you know, for young Catholics because you grew up. But for for us old, you know, used to be when you uh, were going to go to communion, you had to not eat for six or seven or eight hours before you went to communion. Of course, that was done away with. And then, of course, it used to be that you know, when you were receiving the, you know, the, the body of Christ, you know, the priest would, with his anointed, you know, the, the priest who had been anointed, his hands had been anointed and whatever, you know, and after the changes were made, you know, you could just hold out your hand and the priest would, you know, give it to you, put it into your hand, into your unanointed, you know, hands and you could, just a lot of, uh, stuff like that now you think I think you can pick it up can you hear it that's the trash truck that comes seems like it comes up every morning too maybe it's every other morning like 5 a.m. in the morning here it's uh, 
you know, 11, 10 a.m. But it it comes and man, it bangs. It scares scares the cat. I think the cat is finally getting used to uh, getting used to it. Uh, so anyway, that's I was going to complain about uh, YouTube, and they did correct that uh, because what I was telling my son when I was telling him about it that I'd made a uh, two-hour video, and it was marked as uh, not appropriate for advertisers. And what happens, like, for everybody, of course, for some it's the, the number of, but let's just take me. I make a video, and it gets, you can see down there, in uh, the first day, maybe it gets 80 views, maybe 50 views. It gets 80 views. Uh, the next day, maybe it's up to 150 views or 100 views or whatever. That's sort of it. Uh, then, you know, the number of views goes way down. So, now, it really doesn't matter because I don't make that much, you know, I make $30 or, actually, we could check here. I make $30 maybe a month from YouTube. But, take, okay, take somebody else that has a video... Um, that gets a lot of views right away, you know, hundreds of thousands or a million or something. If if you upload that video and then right away, Amazon, because of their system of checking or whatever, decides that's not appropriate for, you know, advertisers. And if it takes them, so it, then if you hit the button to say, hey, this video's okay, please check it. If they don't check it for several days, you're losing a lot of money. And if that thing said, what, it would be a week? Uh, was it a week or two weeks? Can't remember. Anyway, I think that would be, that would be it for you, you know? Because you get this spike in, in views right in the beginning. And then, the, you know, then it drops, you know, drops off. Um, but they did. I, I marked it. Uh, and usually I don't. If the thing is flagged, not appropriate, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not. Not making that much money. I could just not even try to monetize it. I could, you know, market it. Don't even bother to put ads in it. Um, but wait a minute. Let's see. We can go down here to other features. Now settings. What's new? Oh, here we go. Monet money. Okay. Why do we have this? Overview, okay, where at a, what, uh, let's see. Maybe it's settings. Channel, default, community, other settings, nope. Well, I just looked at it for some reason. Okay, let's go to try this again. Video advertising. Maybe I have to click on that little tiny thing. No, I don't know where it is. It's, 
it's been, it's gone in the black hole of websites. So I'm still using my 4K monitor in uh, 4K mode. Yeah. And I changed the tripod so it's down a little bit, went to a different tripod. So it's, that's a little bit better. The other tripod, I couldn't get it down that low. So it was, um, that's my Roku TV. I'm going to be watching uh, say Windows Weekly for here. Days. You have to do it for seven days. And then you have to know to come back after seven days and then reset it to a... This was rec made yesterday, so I am watching it today. Um, so what else? Um, let's go here and see. I use start page. It's uh, start.me. Start.me as my home page or front page or whatever. And then I put all these, you know, links. So I, that was, so I can also remember to be sure and check the credit cards so they don't charge me a late fee and uh, my medical stuff here, my medical record information, my uh, diabetic, that's a user guide, my diabetic analysis thing, which is on my cell phone. But, and I do pay, I forget, $8 a month or something like, um, something like this for this uh, program. And, uh, oh, um, let's see, uh, reports. Pretty neat. Uh, pattern analysis, all kinds of information, you know. PDF, see it in a PDF. Uh, I just never, I, I do it on my cell phone. I enter the data on my cell phone. See, here's logbook compact. So. I don't do anything with food. I, I'm a, oh, I'm a type two diabetic. I don't do anything with trying to record what food I eat and my blood, testing my blood sugar. I, uh, I just do it in the morning. This is a, a lance that goes in here. There's not one in there right now, but it goes right in the end of uh, there. And then you put the thing back on. Then you put it in, you fire it into where, and it sticks you and you get your drop of blood. And then these strips. Let's see. The strips go in this meter thing, and then you put the get the drop of blood on the strip, and then you get that you get your uh, you get your number, and then I entered into the uh, things. Sometimes I do my weight, and sometimes my blood pressure. Not very often. In fact, I'm not. Since my blood sugar has been so good, I, I've gone a couple weeks without even doing, you know, the uh, thing. So, but anyway, it's, it's really neat. First time I started using this, I, um, when I went to see my doctor, I printed it out and took it to him, and he was like, "Wow!" And then he said, "And I, you know, he said, and I said, well, you can have it, you know." He said, I'm going to go out and show. So he went out and was showing the, look at this, you know. I think by now he's probably uh, a 
probably a lot of people are doing. Maybe not that exact program, but I think I probably now I don't think it would be. Um, just like, hang on a second. I'm back. Uh, this is my Palm device. It's the uh, cellular cellular phone and uh, a Palm device. And I'm not sure. Uh, because I had as soon as Palm came out with, or whoever was the first one to come out with, I, you know, I got one. And you could store data in here and do all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, I think I still have the charger around here someplace for this. But, because my memory, I mentioned, uh, I talked about that in a video, because I, I have some memory problems. I've always had memory problems. Uh, maybe it's just lack of attention, you know, or not knowing how to remember something that you need to remember or, or being so, uh, so you didn't, you know, so I didn't care. I don't want to memorize. Why would I want to memorize phone numbers, you know, and that type of stuff. So I had all, all the information and I would get new devices as they you know came out and changed I forget if Palm was the original and then I'm not sure that I don't think this is Palm I think this is powered by Palm well anyway I always had that and I was working you know like hospital security and firefighters or police officers would come in and uh, want some, you know, some information or something, the phone number or want something. And I'd just like, and, I'd pop, and they'd say, what's that? And I'd, and then they'd say, hey, and they'd call their other officers or EMTs or paramedics over, look at this, you know. So I was always into high tech type of, uh, type of stuff. That was really, I really, in, back in those days, uh, Now, my God, everybody's, everybody has, every, you know, remember back in the old days when I, well, I'm still an amateur radio operator, but back in the old days, ham radio operators would be, let's see if I've got my, okay. You know, you'd be out in your car driving, or you could be riding a bike, you could be doing, um, batteries probably dead. No, still a little juice left in it. But you'd be out someplace and you would see a traffic accident or a house on fire. You know, I remember seeing house traffic accidents. Remember, you know, houses on fire on the time. And I'd call, well, it was before 911, but on the, your radio, you could punch in the code to activate a the repeater phone patch that was the repeater was on top of a water tower or a tall building and there was hundreds of repeaters in your area and you could make a phone call uh, on your ham radio to the police department uh, and tell them, but you'd, you'd have to tell them, you know, the uh, person that answered, you know, I'm an amateur radio. Well, you had to tell them because or else they'd wonder, you know, because they weren't used to people. All they were used to is getting landline phones from a, a phone in somebody's house or a pay phone or whatever. So you, you needed to explain to them, hey, you know, I'm following a car that's uh, driving on the sidewalk and they'd wonder, they would have wondered how are you making a phone call? You know, so you needed to tell them that. Uh... But anyway, that was neat back then. Now everybody has cell phones. And uh, 
So it's kind of neat to be elite. And now we're all equal. The internet and the World Wide Web has equalized all of us. Somebody can be sitting in the basement and take down a major computer system or do all, or somebody can be, you know, doing research, you know, somebody, something happens, a news item or some information comes out and you can be sitting there in, you know, your bedroom or the living room or your office at home or something and you can actually, you know, uh, search this, search that or whatever and write up something and post it to your blog or now, of course, post it to Facebook or maybe create an image, take, or if there's some image of the president or somebody, you can take that image and, uh, you know, change it around to make it funny or whatever, and you can post it to Facebook. And if it's creative enough or interesting enough, people are going to go, wow, and they're going to click on it and they're going to, they're going to post it or they're going to forward it to someplace else. And I've seen some really hilarious, what well, we all have. Of course, there's also some vicious uh, stuff going on. People can do that, too. Okay, uh, it's almost 1130. I need to... Uh, the cat's not crying anymore. Darlene and James left, and Dee Dee's not crying anymore. So Dee Dee's probably going to... There she's laying there looking at the front door. Asleep, I think. Uh, it usually takes them about two hours when they go to Walmart before they're back with the groceries. They're going to take an extra 30 minutes today. So in about two, Dee Dee knows, and in about two hours, she'll want to, uh, she knows it's time for them to come. So I may have to give her a treat or something to keep her pacified. So what else did I want to tell you? Um, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to go back to watching Windows Weekly and see what's going on. Then I'll maybe check Google now or whatever on uh, the Twit Network. So thank you very much for watching.